All right, we should be live. Hopefully folks can hear us and see us and all that fun stuff. We are streaming on both Twitch and YouTube again tonight. And we're here playing some BX Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Queen's Harvest is the actual module I'm kind of cribbing from, but it's not exact. I'm kind of shoehorning it into our, our current campaign. Uh, but tonight, Dion, who are you playing? Well, tonight I am playing Stoltein Reinbach the Seventh, a French aristocrat and magic user, level four. Always good things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jameis, who you got? Uh, apparently, I'm playing an elf called Galen, but where I am, I've been here for at least sixteen months now. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Uh, Radnar is played by. <laughs> I'm Bill. I play Radnar the Large. He is a ninth level magic user, and I think he's the only original member of the Green Company now, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm also very large. My <laughs> character is. I'm, I'm not that small either. Uh, bringing us to the newest. No, no, no. Actually, Shottleheim is the newest. Uh, the second no, no, no. newest person in the party. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm playing Sir Shanks, and I am being shoehorned in here. Yeah, there we Much go. Much like Morty. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were the goblin now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do goblins. No, no, we don't do yet. goblins. Yet. Mm -hmm. I'll whittle you hey, down. We don't think Shane here. If you want to do goblins. Oh, Bert was <laughs> talking about doing goblins. Ooh, ooh, let's move on from there. <laughs> uh, right. So last time uh, you arrived at a small little little place, uh, Stalinford, which uh, is in your new domain, or at least in the new Green Company's domain, as some territory was uh, given to you uh, by Duke Stefan uh, for you to explore uh build a base of operation and uh cultivate the local area for taxes it's basically your own little barony but it is quite wild uh we're getting some echo from somebody i think it's bill because he's not wearing his headphones it might be <laughs> um so going there, you find that this little village of Stalinford, Stalinford is having some problems uh, with some of the local, uh, well, orcish, goblinish, and uh, other uh, territorial monsters in the area. Uh, but it has a defender. Uh, Arlick uh, is a now retired cleric, a uh, battle cleric, once worked uh, with Duke Stefan in the Order of the Griffin came out here to take over his uh, father's home after his father had passed on and wanted to retire to a quiet life in the countryside. Hasn't been very quiet. Has not been very quiet. So we ended the last session with you guys noticing the, uh, I'm not going to call it strange nocturnal habits because this is pretty common at the time where the town folks will work all day. They'll come to the public house, uh, have a meal, have something to drink, go home, and then come back out later in the night. Um, so we ended last session with you enjoying some of the quieter discussion and food that was brought out during the night. You notice that Arlick does come out uh, for the the second part of uh, the evening's entertainment. He's not so much with the drink, which seems to be what the first part of the evening is all about. So uh, what else do you guys remember? You guys have a letter uh, that you were asked to deliver that uh, Arlick had found. We have to take that back to the green company, right? No. Oh no, that's to the um it's the, mage. The, mage, so it's the mage. Just like a day away or something. Yeah, this yeah. up in the hills, about not quite a, day, a full day if you're uh, doing it by foot from here. Uh yes, a a Mr. Kavorkian. Mm. The wizard. <laughs> yes. He never built a proper tower. Tower, but he has a nice little two-story uh, brownstone up in the up in the hills. Uh, there's some ruins I need to get to. And uh, yes, yeah. you heard some rumors about there's a there's a, a deep hole somewhere in this territory, affectionately dubbed Mel's Hole, but no one seems to remember exactly where it is. 
And you know, I'm also on the list to get in touch with the dwarves, we establish communication with them. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly check out the silver mine and see if there's something happened there that we need to deal with. Uh, just orcs and yeah. Uh, so on the map, I uh, have marked out your domain. So, uh, Richard, this uh, marked off area up here is the domain that was uh, deeded to the Green Company. Now, someone in the Green Company is actually going to be the, the Baron of the Realm. One person gets the noble title, but <laughs> the land as a whole is deeded to the Green Company. That's what I'm calling him Stottleheim the Entitled. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, take, I'm just wearing the hat, you know. Who knows if they'll give it to me? I doubt it, but I, I'll, I'll take the blunt of like everyone hating me for being the lord. All right, and so uh, the Green Company has sent out its, uh, its B team <laughs> to scout out the new domain. <laughs> I thought we were I mean, the A team. I'm surprised we're that high. <laughs> I mean, I I haven't even joined the Green Company because I asked, "Hey, why should I join the Green Company?" And everybody went, "Eh," and then never explained to me what the Green Company was. So, exactly. you know, you've just been mooching off them for the last bit, and we'll uh, we'll get to bringing your character here. In, yeah, uh, that's just why we go on about Winky more than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so you guys guy. also took over a small dwelling. Uh, previous occupants are dead. And uh, this, this little graveyard out there. We didn't do it. <laughs> just to but that's, uh, yeah, it's just a place to, it's a, a small base of operation until you get the feel of things. And uh, so everyone comes back after having that late night uh, bit of entertainment and food uh, in the morning. Uh, you are rudely interrupted very early uh, by knocks and screams on your front door as Scribbleshank says, <laughs> Help, let me in. People want to listen to my uh, long speeches and I need somewhere to rest for a while. Yep. Help, Scrim please. <laughs> Scribble Shanks, your new acquaintances had struck out several days ago. Um, you weren't around at the time. You were probably entertaining on the streets by telling all kinds of stories. And so you missed their departure, but you were told roughly how to get to them. And so for the last day, you've been going through dense wilderlands hounded by wyverns, orcs, goblins. <laughs> it's just one story, Bert. It's not dozens of stories. It's one story yep. he's been telling the whole time. But see, it's, it's a never-ending story because it is yep. the story of Scrimble Shank's life, you see. <laughs> well, this is a green company building. We can let you rent a room. <laughs> or at least a big match. So Scribble Shanks has arrived <laughs> finally <laughs> at your porch after uh, you're not a member of the green company, so you know we have to charge you. <laughs> after townsfolk have directed you to where the company is staying. Pan camera to a scrimble shanks who has been running for his life for hours. <laughs> oh my god. The game relieved. <laughs> Crowds. They were clamoring for more and I just had to get away. You do believe me? Oh. Mm, well, that's cool, so there yeah. we are. Party is assembled. <laughs> well scrimble shanks doesn't lie, he just goes on and on. Yeah. Mm. Does he lie? <laughs> I've never really listened long I mean, to find out. When, when I get to a bed, yes. Can't be horizontal, vertical, vertical all the time. Well, yeah, no, to... it's war, put a cord across you. you know, it's a no. mm. Radnor is fascinated by his stories. Oh, well, that must be why I'm here then. Yep. Stolheim doesn't mind. He'll just stop speaking common and speak in French whenever whenever <laughs> Scribble changes around. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever actually communicated. Nope. Yep. Well, that <laughs> and, and uh, Schottelheim, because of his background, has a particular, maybe not dislike, but aversion towards anything that's not human. <laughs> so everybody but Randall. Yeah. 
Well, Schottelheim was a uh, was a dirty cultist to begin with, so well, he no, was already he working on not the being because they're the ones who taught him. Exactly, like I said, dirty cultist, and so <laughs> he was already acclimating himself to the non-human. But you know, cultural prejudice is hard to get rid of. <laughs> hey, what's yeah. the deal with that, Stoltenheim? Why were you a cultist? Um, I wasn't a cultist. I was. A yeah, you were. Sorry. You were learning magic I in mean, a world that doesn't magic allow magic. In a world that doesn't allow it. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't like worshiping like some evil thing or anything. I just, I had a gift from my family line that manifested in my generation of all of them, and I had to learn to use it so I wouldn't accidentally burn the town down. You know. There's that. Well, I mean, that could have been fun, funny in the right circumstances. Yeah, I, I will say I won't take back that life for any other life. I mean, I met so many interesting fey creatures and all sorts of stuff out in the wild. Or as but... your fellow countrymen would say, demons. You cavorted with demons. <laughs> <laughs> Semantics. Hmm, I've never heard of that demon. You guys went to bed with your bellies full, uh, topped off in some good local homebrew, and it, passingly good night. The fireplace worked, stayed warm. Uh, most of you had to throw bedrolls on the floor, but other than that, good night. So it is the morning, way too early in some of your estimations. I've got two hours meditation, that's all I need. I'm good. <laughs> the roosters are just starting to crow. <laughs> Shall we press snooze on them? Well, I mean, I'm not sure why we're here, but I'm here to help in any way sure I can. You, I'm not sure why you're here either. <laughs> oh, well. All right, then. <laughs> Is this was a, well, sort of, you know, and again, you're not part of the Green Company, so why did you come along exactly? <laughs> well, you would have stayed back in Thick Lara. Mm -hmm. Well, because we we all were together and had a shared experience, and it's good to talk about when we have a shared experience and, you know, we lost time, or, I mean, we're a year out of went through going through so that thing. So we've got to and... go and do some things. Now, I think you're right, Stottleheim, that we should probably send a note off to get. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, happens. if you want, if you want something to tell stories about, just hang out with us for a while. We we tend to, mm -hmm. we tend to get involved in things like what well, there was the Hollow Earth. Mm -hmm. There was, um, mm -hmm. I was there. Yeah. What's this Earth of which you speak? Exactly. I don't know. Oh, I know of Earth. It's where I'm from. Oh. Are you Hollow? No, I don't think so. Try to put my fingers in your mouth. Oh, please, no. That's kind of <laughs> please, you can't reach. No. <laughs> no, 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 Stoltenheim. That's a that's that's a custom where he comes from. He means no disrespect by it. I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> well, that's see, you're denying his culture. Then you can't do that. You've got to uh, let him. Sure, I can. People have done it in France for years. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Good point. <laughs> uh, so, what do, right. you, do you want to send it up for a secretary of some kind? You were thinking. Stop line. What? <laughs> no, he wasn't thinking. I think we should sure. send Scrimble Shanks with the message to the wizard. Are, are you, are you, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you have this this unopened uh, message that would... Uh... No, no, no. No, we say we're going to send off a message to... I can't remember her name now. Yeah. Oh, um, Magpie? Back, back to the... Magpie, yeah. Well, back to the Green Company and speak to everyone to send out a secretary or someone to look after the company house and potentially do it up. So we just have to find like a warden on the road, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so maybe look into getting a blacksmith to eventually make the way here as well. So yeah, you were going to hire some laborers, and Penhalgian uh, was one option. Uh, but they also suggested you might have better luck yeah, with the dwarves. dwarves. Yeah, the dwarves, let's go get the dwarves. dwarves well, because the silver mine. In that. We can send up on the sector in that in the meantime. Yes. Didn't we have a blacksmith or, or somebody like that? They had one. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the chain of blacksmiths. We got yeah. the chain. I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We can so we can send off that. That's not urgent because we're actually having metal right this minute. But get wow. that started. Get that underway. Can we just hire a local brat to go and set, get take a message out to the road and wardens? Oh yeah, certainly. Okay. Uh, one of one of the kids will do it. They'd rather be yep. doing that than shucking. Yeah, we'll just get we'll just get one of the local <laughs> um, youth to go and do the mission. Then we can go off and do some other important things like deliver this piece of mail. <laughs> well, would we want where, where's the dwarven city? It's down like it's down here, south. right? Mm -hmm. Like around yeah. here? No, 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 it's over here. High, oh, high it's time. over yep. here. High rotten or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so, do so we your just territory wanna, like... goes to right to the base of their hills, and then. So why don't we just float down the river and then like get off? Well, do right you want to go deliver this message first? Well, yeah. Well, we're sending the oh to the wizard, yeah, yeah, because he's up here, right? I no, he's like a no, day dude, away. He's one hex really. away from where the yeah, pushpin yeah. oh. is. Okay, yeah. cool. So okay. that's close. We'll, we'll go do that. We'll take yeah. the horses and go. That sounds fine. I mean, you guys know more about this area than I do, and <laughs> even then, it's not much. Come on, Winky. Let's go. Yes, come along, Winky. My new best friend, and I say that in common. <laughs> mm. uh, so it's about 12 miles distant, uh, is what you're told uh, to get there. Uh, it, the path is pretty simple enough. Um, there actually is a, a not well used, but a used game trail that leads there, and he, his home is at the base of the hills, and apparently the police are coming for scrimble shakes. He did something awful in the right. forest getting here. <laughs> Yeah, I've been away for a year. All crimes should have been, you know, timed out by then. Uh, <sighs> all right, uh, so you're gonna head out to Kavorkians then. Yep. Okay. The way you said that fills me with concern. Oh no! I just get to roll on the random table for the, <laughs> the journey. That's all. Yeah, yeah, you're the fine. The random table. Yes. You're all randomly murdered. Okay. So on this game trail, uh, there's pretty much... Uh, you don't pass anyone. Um, the trail's been widened for carts at some point. It looks like there are some orchards uh, that look like some husbandry has been going on. So maybe they bring carts through here and load up when fruit is bearing. <laughs> From the trees. Uh, but that's not the case currently. Uh, they're in bloom, but no fruit yet. And it doesn't look like anyone's come through here for a bit. Um, I would like to just double check some of the game trails just to see what sort of games in the area. Otherwise. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, make me a wisdom check. Woo! Yep. Medium success. Yep. About what you expected. There's a lot of small game, uh, rabbit, squirrel, that sort of thing. Larger animals. The only thing that you need to take care of is it looks like there's some wild boar about. Uh, there are some deer, but nothing any larger than that. You're not seeing like bear sign or anything like that. But wild boar can be nasty, uh, and you do see some fresh boar sign. Good eating on one of them. They mm -hmm. are. <clears throat> but eventually, the trail uh, ends, uh, clearing through the forest, and you're in a kind of a low shrub area, just at the foot of uh, where the mountains start. They, it starts as rolling hills, and they become much larger mountains as they build up to that almost impenetrable range between here and the province over. But uh, you see, there is a trail that's marked out with some uh, very uh, light colored stones, and this kind of winding path that goes up to a very nice uh, wooden home, two stories. Uh, it looks like there's a brook beneath it that kind of it's up on stilts and the brook kind of feeds underneath. Um, very well maintained garden off to the side. Uh, very nice, comfortable looking dwelling. You see the fireplace, there is smoke coming out of it. I don't see anyone moving around though. Oh, I'm going to go and take a quick look at the garden and see what sort of things in there. Are they things common to the area or. All right. Uh, yeah, head Sorry. up the path. 
the gardens are kind of lining the path as you get up a little closer. And uh, no, in fact, you're seeing there's the left hand side is almost all ornamental. It's uh, flowers, uh, things that could be used in particular concoctions, but mostly ornamental. Uh, the right hand side, though, are fruits and vegetables that are not really native to the area. Oh, wow. That is interesting. I mean, it's kind of a horticultural thing here, but I mean, I don't know where all of these come from, so I can't give you a full rundown on, you know, the genealogy of all these things, where they, how they could have got to this place. Does anybody want to listen? No? No? I can right. just knock on the door. Do you? I look at everybody. Should we? I mean, it's only polite. I go and I knock on the door. Uh, you do. Um, after a few moments, the door opens just a little bit. Uh, you're staring up at a very tall, uh, angular man. Um, maybe late 20s or so. Very hawk-like features, black hair pulled back very severely. And he looks at the, the door's just open to crack. And you notice that there's kind of like a crossbow bolt and a crossbow in the other hand that he's got cocked at the door. And he's looking out at you. Yes. I uh, put my hands up a little bit when I see the crossbow. And I go, uh, hello, sorry to disturb you. Uh, Are you no, brigands? You have to tell no, me if you're brigands. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. We're <laughs> actually, uh, we are with the Green Company, and we've been given this uh, this a whole plot of land in this area, um, and we're g just getting to know the locals. Um, a cleric in the town gave us a letter to deliver to you. A um, letter? Yes. Let me see the letter. Who has the letter? Winky. Get that back. Did we come all this way without the letter? Did we leave yeah, it back? Well, one of us got the letter. I assume Winky probably got it by now. <laughs> I think Galen had it. I, I think no you were idea. the one that took it, but someone well, has it. We'll produce yeah. the letter. So uh, he will. Uh, he takes it and he says, "Just a moment, please," and just kind of slowly closes the door, as to not be rude, but quite firmly in your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after a there. moment, uh, the door is open. You see he's opened the letter and he's holding it in his hand. And he looks looks a little shocked, a little concerned. He looks out at you. So you're the new landlords then. Uh, would, would you like to come in? I was I about, to have, uh, about to have dinner. You're welcome to join me. As long as we're not on the menu. <laughs> oh, no. Hair and some uh, vegetables from the garden. I'm quite a cook. Please. Come in. Cool. I'm interested. I looked over your garden. It I is walk right in. remarkable. I, I introduce myself to him. I go, Stoltein Reinbach the Seventh, French aristocrat, uh, last surviving member of the Amber family line. Well, no, that's not true. I found others. Sent a letter to them. So it's not but... France. Just, just so that we're clear, it's Averon is where well, it's you're... in France, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's just oh. very French based. <laughs> oh, I thought it was actually France. Okay, no. all right, Averon, Averon, um, and I kind of just go. Also, uh, a fellow magic user. <laughs> I'm ah. still new, but uh, willing to learn. Is shift a little bit as you say a fellow magic user he's like ah yes yes uh everyone else introduce themselves sure. i'm radnor i'm galen this is winky um, well, well come in come in uh you guys the, the house is is well made uh, it's rustic, but there's a lot of appointments to it that uh, speak of a little bit of wealth. Like uh, the fireplace is well made. The stone looks well placed, maybe dwarven craftsmanship. The wood is all very finely detailed and engraved, maybe elven craftsmanship. Uh, but there are large parts of what you're seeing that are just covered in cloth. Um, you know, just not sure why. But he leads you to the kitchen where indeed you do smell a wonderful meal cooking. 
and uh, he has everyone sit down. He plays places out uh, rabbit stew and some roasted vegetables in front of everyone. Uh, he's got some uh, small beer that he pours for everyone. It's like so, uh, and he's still holding. He pulls the letter out after everyone's seated down. He's like, so how did you come upon this? The letter? Yes, yes, yes. The cleric in town, the retired cleric gentleman, gave it to us. Okay, I don't remember. I'm assuming you mean Stalinford. It's the only close. Yes. I don't remember there ever being a cleric there. Well, there is now. He recently came to town, apparently. His grandfather used to live here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. He did tell us where he found the letter, and I will relay that. I can't remember what he said, though. I think like he got found it in the house or something. I can't remember what, but yeah. It wasn't like he had the letter himself. Okay. And you say you're a part of the Green Company, so you, uh, you're you chartered uh, from Duke Stefan. What What is your charter, if I might ask? That's a good question. Don't we have like a letter or You're, a writ? Yeah, you do. You I guys have the writ. You're essentially, your charter is cartographers. You're supposed to be exploring his lands and oh, so an adventurous sort, of folks. I see. Mm, mm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Um, so all of you will note that uh, while you have formally introduced yourselves, he has not introduced himself to this point. Do we remember what was his name that we were told? The letter was to be delivered to the wizard Kavorkian. Mm. And um, I'm sorry, I, I, the name is uh, escaping me that they mentioned. Y you're you are. Ah, uh, uh, I am Karen. 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 Yes, no doubt you were uh, looking for my uncle, uh, the wizard Kevorkian. I'm afraid that uh, he's recently died. He was 90, oh. 90 years old, and then like oh. most of his kind, didn't feel the need to live forever. I'm so sorry Natural for your causes. loss. Mm. Is he human? Yes, yes. His life was somewhat extended by his wizardly nature and his robust constitution, but he died as he lived in the arms of many of his servants. I'll look at the other two magic users. See how robust their constitution <laughs> is. Uh, yes, um... So he, uh, he had a wife. Uh, they separated some years ago, and I uh, recently received a missive that I should come and uh, claim the, uh, the line's property, as it were. I was not very close to uncle, uh, but I'm the last uh, child of that union uh, of the line. He was quite old when I was sired. He's your uncle, right? Are you uh, saying you're a direct descendant from him and he's we your uncle? say uncle to be polite. Uh, I am, in fact, one of his children. That's just confusing. Well, I mean... Mother was a servant, uh, a very young servant, and uh, the father was already quite elderly. When you say so, father... Are you referring to your father or to your uncle? <laughs> the one in the same. One in the same, I'm trying to delicately say. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. It's like that song from the movie, I'm my own grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, all of you will also notice as he's setting the table and uh, moving the plates of food around that there seems to be something wrong with his, uh, he's got a wounded arm. He's, he holds it very close to his body, and while well, you don't see, he's got like a, a long sleeve uh, uh, shirt on, so you don't you know you don't see the bandages. But he he never really moves it out of this kind of L shape and keeps it very close to his body. The fingers move and everything, but he doesn't move it far. What uh what happened to your arm there, buddy? Oh, uh, I was attacked uh, by a creature, a very large beetle. Well, about a month ago, it, it's healing slowly, very slowly. The wound seems to have some 
ill effects that keep normal healing from uh, occurring quickly. It, I'm on the mend, though. Well, Galen, would you be able to help him? I can try. Did you, did you say there was something stopping this from... Happening? Well, the wound just seemed to have been uh, quite ghastly. It became infected very quickly, and it just hasn't healed fast. It, it is on the mend, just slowly. Well, just give me a minute to have a look. I want to try and take two minutes to... Okay. You yeah, that's fine. Something. Just, a few Sorry. quiet moments pass, and let well, probably Scrimble Shanks feels that silence with a tail as uh, you tuck into the food. <laughs> um, there's nothing magical about the wound. Uh, there are some magical implements he has on him. Uh, he has a belt buckle that seems to be magical, a few rings, uh, one on each hand that's magical. Uh, all of them fairly low, they don't give off a lot. Mm. And if you, as you look around the room, there are several things that appear magical. The wound itself, though, is not. Would a curse show up as magical? Yes. Okay. Disease would not, though. Hmm. Well, so it's not a curse. Oh, I can try. Fine, I'll try cure disease. Okay. Uh, and that is that is the thing. Uh, healing him would have helped, but it wouldn't got rid of the problem. It's it's a diseased wound. So, cast cure disease. Uh, he will heal normally from this point. So, doesn't feel better right away, but he can notice something's changed. Uh, once you've done that and the meal is done, uh, he offers brandy to everyone. Uh, he says, "Look, I I think you might be suitable people for helping me with a problem I have. If you have the time, you see, as I said, I've only just moved here." Uh, coming from Specularium, and I'm still taking stock of this whole house. It looks wonderful, apart from the basement. Um, mm -hmm. And he looks very uncomfortable as he says that. He shifts in the chair. Um, I haven't told you everything of importance. The note is worrying me because it could concern important people. I, I can't tell you everything. It's, it's very political. Um, but I will promise to be wholly truthful in what I can tell you. My father's basement holds some of his magical items and, and some treasure. Um, if you were capable, I was wondering if you could find something down there for me. Uh, a sword with a very unmistakable gem set hilt in the pommel. Um, there's a diamond tiara that I know is there as well. He told me about it. Um, I want the sword and the tiara. You could have anything else you find down there. I'm sure there are great riches. The, the problem is that my old man fitted the basement with traps and magical guardians. Nothing meant to be lethal, but it could be dangerous, possibly very much so. Um, some of the guardians might be out of control by now. Um, my problem is simple. And he kind of moves his injured arm. Uh, I'm not in a position to go down myself anymore and get what I want. I did try. I was just about to advertise for adventurous souls that might be willing to help. And you showed up at my door. Um, what do you think? Are you interested? Could you perhaps help How me out with this? Because this basement. Uh, well, uh, I haven't been able to get the full lay of it. Uh, it can't be all that large. The house lies on bedrock. It, I suppose he could have done magical tunneling, but I only got so far uh, before I got sliced up really bad by this beetle that I found down there. But I only want those two items. As I said, anything else you find, you're welcome to. Uh, how crawling with guardians is this place? I didn't get far, um, mm. I'm afraid. So I, I can't tell you for certain. Well. I mean, I know the father experimented uh, on some of the local wildlife, and likely that will be the nature of the Guardians. Oh. <clears throat> well, I... I'm assuming... Go ahead. No, no, go on. I was going to say, I'm assuming like it's not like anything's going to reappear if we take our time trying to clear it out if it's bigger than we imagine because the magic user that created it's dead 
So yes, yes, and then he's tapping the letter on the table. But it seems that uh, the return of those items is in need of some alacrity, as this uh, this message has woefully uh, been long in the delivery, and I'm afraid uh, the certain things have come to a head. Uh, and those items are solely needed as soon as possible. I mean, aren't both of the people who sent it, who, the sender and the receiver, dead now? Well, they are. Um, and uh, as his last surviving heir, um, it falls to me to do what needs to be done I with mean... this. Hmm, no offense. Of immune to fireball? <laughs> Well, I mean, do what you must, but I would prefer <laughs> the that you... Of fireballs and then just go with them. <laughs> I would prefer that you don't make the dwelling unstable, um, as there are many artifacts up here which may not be inclined uh, to that sort of destruction. Uh, it might be hazardous to the area at large. Well, that's us out there. I'm... I mean, I mean no offense, but, <laughs> but I'm going to be offensive now. <laughs> How do we know you're, like, the only heir of this place and you're not just someone who is uh, turned up early and is trying to claim the, the good stuff before the oh, other heirs turn up? That is a marvelously I mean, good question. And um, so, if, how do you... Did he have a will? Um, not... Per se, and you do bring up very so he good died points. in testate. So anything that is on this land is in fact owned by the state, which is Shuttleheim, as I understand. No, no, there is the right of uh, the right of family here, um, is how that works. But oh. you do have an interesting point. I have no way of proving my my relationship to you other than the fact that I was able to enter the building. Uh, as if you would like to test yourself, uh, if you will leave the building and try to gain entry without me letting you in, you will see there are some problems with that. Mm. Yeah, all right. I'm interested in finding out. I watch. So I'll go outside. Okay. You all go outside. Looks perfectly normal. It is getting late, by the way. Uh, the 12 I stay mile inside. Took, took a little bit of time to get here. Uh, all right. You stay inside having some brandy. I want to watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm just watching, like, sipping and oh, leaning I'm, back I'm a bit. <laughs> Okay. But uh, if he's willing, I would want to lead me to the basement door because I want to have a look at that and just have a look down stairs and whatever. Okay, well, uh, the basement door is actually in uh, in a room of its own. He takes you to the room, he produces a key, unlocks the door, and, and takes you in. And uh, the basement actually has um, it's a it's a, a spiral stair that descends in the middle of the floor, and it's got kind of like a hood over it, and. Okay. Uh, iron yeah. bars that are set in between the hood and the floor uh, in a gate, and he produces the key for it, hands it to you. When, when you are... Yeah, when we're ready to go down. Yeah. When you're we'll ready, uh, this will open basement. the gate. Okay, so who goes outside? I think it was just Scrimble Jinx. Okay. Uh, well, then, as you go outside... Um, the rest of you inside, uh, Karen takes you like to the front wall, and uh, he says a word that you can't quite follow. You're not sure what language it's in, but the whole side of the house with the door becomes translucent, so you can see out of it. Although the door frame is still there, and it blocks the view from the door frame, and you see Scrimble Shanks on the outside looking around. Of course, Scrimble Shanks is just a wall to you. Nothing's changed on the outside. Still looks like a nice two-story wooden stone, wood and stone home. All right. Well, I try and get in through the door then, just by walking up and opening it. Okay. Uh, you grasp the handle and you pull. Um, it doesn't open. <clears throat> I push to make sure it's not one of those doors. You okay. know, most doors. Uh, you do both of those things, and there isn't uh, any give at all. It's almost as if it isn't a door. Um, like, there's not even... There's no rattle, there's no movement in the least bit. I find a window. You find a window. You find a window that looks into the kitchen. 
Uh, but you notice on the outside, you had just come from the kitchen. There should have been plates uh, and your dirty dishes on the table, maybe one or two of your fellows there. But you look in and it's a perfectly clean kitchen uh, with nothing about. Doesn't look like there has been a meal there. All right, I'll try and get in. Okay. Uh, you grasp the edge of the window. And again, it doesn't feel like a window. Like it doesn't budge, move, shift, or even feel like glass. What does it feel like? Stone. Oh. Do we right. see him like fiddling yes. at the window? <laughs> yeah. I wave. <laughs> Do I see them? No. All right. All right. Well, uh, the only other thing is to, I don't know, go onto the roof if I can and see if there's like okay. a way in that way. Uh, you climb up the hill a bit, uh, to a place where you can easily, uh, jump up and grab the edge of the roof and climb up on, uh, it has, uh, clay tiles. At least they look like clay. Same thing though. When you get to the top and you start feeling in them, they don't have that clink or that, that sound of clay. It, it feels like solid stone beneath you. Uh, you go over to the fireplace where you see, uh, the smoke coming out of it, but when you go to it, it's not warm. Can I put my hand in the hole? Uh, you cannot. There's no uh -huh. hole there, but it looks like it. There's smoke coming out of it. Oh, this is fascinating. All right, I will go back down to the front door and knock there. Okay, uh, you knock, and uh, he, Karen, opens the door. Can I come in? Yes, you may come in. All right. I touch the, a window nearby. Does it, it feels feel like, like glass. glass. Again? Yeah, feels yeah, like all glass. Right, okay. Ooh. The house is a veritable fortress. If you are not yeah. uh, of the bloodline or invited in by someone of the bloodline, which is the only thing that I can offer to you to tell you that uh, I am who I say. Well, you either are uh, who you say you are, or you're much better at this stealing thing than we are. So, or than I am, at least. Oh, there we go. Well, yes, you're not a thief after all. I'm not, no. You're right. <laughs> As he pats himself down for the candlesticks and silverware he's taking. <laughs> <laughs> he can't help himself. <sighs> well, oh, well I mean, I, I guess that proves something. Mm. I'm not sure what, uh, but it's, it, it is proof. You would prefer rest after your trip um, i'm sure mm -hmm. trying this in the morning would work as well i have guest rooms uh, if you rather get started now that's fine as well other than me i don't think anyone's down anything i'm just down a spell uh, i'm good yeah we can go <laughs> we have light well it's one thing i want to do before we if we are going now or when we do go i want to cast bliss before we go in just to give us that bump before we head into into, into anything why not? He said it's super important, and you know, I'd like to trust that, especially if a wizard was holding on to some artifacts. So, huh? I mean, if you want me to talk out of character table talk real quick, I think this is like really important to the war that's gonna happen. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> But that's my thought. So out of character, I want to do this. <laughs> okay, so do you want to go tonight? Well, it's not night yet. It's There's still hours left before the sun's down, yeah. but it is late. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. I'm tired. I don't have any problems going now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just cast this first and then we can go. Okay, how long does it last? Six turns. Okay. So that's a bit of... Okay, so yeah, the spiral, but... uh, you open uh, the gates at the top, um, and uh, he does tell you that uh, for security reasons, he's going to lock the door into this room in case something comes out while you're down there. Uh, but again, just knock uh, and, and just, you know, just let me know for sure that there's not some creature in the room, and I'll, I'll certainly open it for you. The password is swordfish. 
Swordfish. Swordfish. Interesting. Yes, very well. <laughs> um, okay, so you open the steel bars uh, gate that closes off the staircase going down. It creaks open, and you start down the spar- spiral staircase. It's very, it's completely dark, uh, which is not a problem for Galen. Uh, is anyone else? We've doing got the with? continual light lockets. Okay, don't worry about it. So you display those. Uh, Fig Jam is here in spirit. Okay, so it goes down a good amount. Uh, you figure maybe sixty feet before it lands in a bear chamber. The floor is pretty dusty, although you do see bear some chamber. marks. Watch out for the bears! Uh, number two on the floor. Okay. Yep, uh, that's where you are. Cool. Is that a door? Yes, there is a door there. So, what's the broken sides? Um, they're bars. Ah. Is there anything on the other side of the bars? Can we no, the booms? Uh, uh, there is it's solid wall on the other side. It kind of like the bars come down almost like it were bars that would be covering like a window, but about half a foot beyond the bars, it's just stones. It's like a little alcove, basically. But it, it's odd. It's very odd. There's nothing behind Red the bars. Red, is there such a symmetrical spell that creates uh, some kind of dungeon or something that would create a room like this in the rocks? So you'd get these bars that would normally be a window going somewhere, but since it's in the middle of a rock, it doesn't do anything. You're muted, by the way, if you're going to reply. If you're listening. <laughs> I'm here, sorry. Yeah, is there is there a magical spell that can create a dungeon like this, including the bars on the window? They're tempted to have to cast inside this rock, which is why there's nothing beyond the rock, nothing beyond the window. Hmm. I don't trust this guy. So do you know of any? Do you, is this a magical thing? Do I do I know anything about anything like this? There are various spells that can be used to do various, like, dungeon constructions or certainly make uh, interesting things in dungeons. Uh, but, I mean, you don't know anything off the top of your head. It's not something that you've already researched yet, having not yet attained the level where you can build a tower. Uh, nothing ah. you've looked into. <laughs> okay. hmm. I, I have one thought. Do? Can we... Can we do something just quickly? I go up and knock on the door again to get wizard bloke. So you want to go up Karen. and knock? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, he's right. you, you, He opens the door and you notice he's kind Can of you... set up uh, some some pillows and like a little, uh, a little tray of food and he's having a snack just outside the door. <laughs> Can you see us down there then? Can you through the... Oh, oh no no the this room is magically sealed off from the rest of the house it right, is a right. safe room okay can you just shout down here that, that we're allowed in here you know as you're one of the blood because you know i couldn't get in and i'm just wondering if some other magic like that could possibly be going on here okay uh he walks over uh, and shouts down the stairs uh, by the power contained in my blood, I do allow these folks. He names your names: uh, Scrimble Shanks, Radnar, Galen, Shovelheim. Uh, access to these rooms. Will that do? Yep, that's fine. Thanks. Don't know if it will make any difference, but you know, can't hurt. Well, it, it can. I mean, my shouting may have alerted quite a few things down there, but. Uh, it can't have hurt. <laughs> well, I've been with these people, I don't know how long, and, you know, Stealth? there's, there's the a lot of clanging and shouting. And... Yeah, I'm wearing chain mail. There's no way I'm solid. Yeah, what are you going to wake up that you don't want disturbed? Uh. Anyway, once Scribble Shakes comes down, I open the door and we go through. We start going through. Yep, that's fine. The I'm others might take two hours to do so. Thanks a lot. I give him this arcane sign that I've picked up on my travels that nobody else has seen. Okay. Um, <laughs> I follow behind Galen. What is your uh, marching order? 
like who's up front. These are fairly narrow corridors, so Maybe. you're only going to be able to go know. one at a time. I guess James is at the front, and I'm at the very back, and wow. then the two squishy wizards are in the middle. Yeah. So Stottle Sardini is going second, so it's me, yeah. Alan Stottle, I, Red, Nor, Scrimble Shanks. Okay. All right, uh, and you're using the continual light locket as you're going forward. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, so uh, Galen, to, to this upside close, the light's going to ruin my eyesight, so I'm going to just use the light. Yep, me. I look above. <laughs> oh, that's okay, give me just a second. All right, uh, so Galen uh, walks forward, uh, holding aloft his locket, and uh, steps on an area of floor, uh, which seems to collapse beneath them and slams closed on top of them. And no, it doesn't give you any chance to detect it. It says it's undetectable. Bye. Uh, and so, yeah, it quickly slams closed the sound of steel above him. Uh, go ahead and take a D4 from the fall. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, and as you land at the bottom of this uh, pit, uh, it smells horrible. Uh, your pendant is still giving you light, but it looks like it's just uh, an earthen box with a steel door up ahead of you. But you hear a tiny little voice. What's the passwords? Oh, one. Swordfish. <laughs> That's not the passwords. What's the passwords? <laughs> Uh, um, meanwhile, up top, uh, so Galen <laughs> has uh, disappeared in front of you here, and this is what lights up uh, with your amulet. Uh, everybody, roll me a d6, except for a Galen. Three. Four. Five. No, five. No, I got five. Yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, yeah. So, what do you do? I mean, knock on the floor, see if I can find the way to open it up so that thing can, we can rescue that elf okay. bloke. So you knock on the floor and uh, you get that peculiar sensation again. I mean, you're expecting stone because it looks like stone floor. Again, none of you can detect where the actual door is, uh, but it's very hard. So as you knock on it and rap at it, it's like it's steel. It's It's harder than stone. Uh, you actually get a little bit of reverberation from it when you hit it hard. Hmm. Things may not be what they appear in this place. I'll tell the other two. Hmm. Um, I would do detect magic, but I feel like the whole place would light up. <laughs> yeah, that's why I haven't turned on the magic site. I did that in Castle Ravenloft. Big mistake. Ooh. Man. Yes. That is why I also have not done this. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys start hearing the sound of sliding stone from behind you. Oh. Turn around. Wait. Turn around and see if the bar place has opened up. Yep. Um, did you bars. leave the door behind you open or closed? I mean, it happened all of a sudden, so I presume it's open still. Okay. Uh, in which case, the door is on its hinge open, but it's just a stone wall. There's no room there anymore. Oh. <sighs> oh. I should have asked for the password from that guy because, I mean, he didn't get killed in the first room and managed to come out. Never mind. Things to remember the next time we come into this exact situation. You don't know that we need a password. Who's only asking me? Oh, that's true. So Galen... Well, we uh, should you, have asked him for information. You're in about a six-foot square box. Um, the walls around you are stone and the floor is dirt. The ceiling that you can reach up and touch is steel above you. Mm -hmm. And is it still asking for the password? Yeah, it's still... Asking, just a very low, insistent, almost annoying voice. What's the password? Um, 
Give us the passwords. That's not the passwords. Oh, he, I does, do. he shut, doesn't know the passwords. Shut my locker and then let my eyesight sort of accustom to the dark and see what's around me. Okay. Um, it is underground, so it's all of the same temperature, so it's nothing. It's just no, black. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lock it back out. Um, so whatever's talking to you is not in the room with you, or it doesn't give off yeah. heat. One of the two. Mm. So I'll open the locker again and start knocking on the door because I don't know what the fuck yeah. it is. So. so, yeah, you can hear Galen knocking from below you. I just haven't figured out how to open this thing yet. Uh, um, the next thing that happens is you hear a bell ding somewhere down the corridors in front of you. Kind of like the uh, sound uh, an elevator makes when the, when the, you like, ding, when it reaches a destination. Oh, my God. Um... And Galen fell down this. Yes, although you is can't there... you can't see that square on the ground. It's just right. you know that the ground opened up underneath him about right there. Can I like take my knife and try and like find like an edge or something? Yeah. Uh, so you take time doing that. Uh, what's everyone else doing? Um, I'm I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm going to... I assume I have like a staff or something with me. I'm going to try to you know, just grunt push it a little bit to see if I can make the doors. Okay. I, I assume he fell into a pit. because. So if happen. you do that, given your strength if you start jabbing your staff down to the ground, you start breaking off bits of stone. Uh, so the stone part of the floor is just a facade. It chips off and breaks off easily. And you see this giant plate of steel beneath it. That doesn't look encouraging. I was just hoping for a rust monster, but wrong campaign. Okay, the next thing that happens is that door that was at the end of the hall kind of just opens very quietly. Just opens. Uh, what door? The one uh, we came through? Nope, the one in front of you there. Oh, that's oh, not on... You can't see it on the map. Oh, okay. That's not on the screen that everybody else can see, but it is on... Right, I see. Yep. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, you're looking at that, are you? All right. I was. All right. Well. Yep. You can make out in the a faint amount of light that goes that far. Uh, it's dusty. There's cobwebs everywhere. There's junk, uh, furniture, some carpets rolled up, it looks like. There's stacks of stuff in there. Uh, but then something starts moving towards you. Humanoid, arms, legs. Doesn't Is it happen. proportioned like normally? or It is, although it's a little large, and it doesn't seem to have a head. Mm. It's not a beetle, though, so we're not going to get bitten and arms oh, useless. So, okay. I don't know. so it's slowly mm. kind of moving towards you. Uh, I'll give you guys an action before we check on initiative. Oh, what what does that look to... like again? It looks like so it's coming. It's it's kind of slowly lumbering into your light. And uh, it looks like a large human. When I say large, maybe if it had a head, it'd be maybe seven feet tall, very broad of shoulder. But it looks to be made almost of clay. And there is no head. But in the center of its chest, you see two orb-like eyes and a mouth. So I'd also be saying Kavorkian's nephew sent us. I mean, he already shut that down. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, hi, <laughs> we're the people that uh, Kevorkian's son was telling you about. I uh, My action is I take a couple steps back and I lean over to Radnor and I go, I think Scrimbleshanks forgot that the Guardians were out of control. Yeah. I think we need to blow it up. <laughs> yeah, I'd like. I'd like. I've been wanting to do that since we got here. Um, I don't yeah. have an attack spell. Um, yeah, I'm just. I'm just checking on something real quick uh, because something a lot of people forget in basic D and D is that not all monsters attack on sight, 
and it depends on their alignment, and it's a roll. So we'll do we'll do a roll uh, to see what happens here. Uh, I just... remember that you guys are bliss, so you get plus one to attack and damage rolls, mm -hmm. not spells. Then I count. Well, are you one of the guardians down here? I have heard of a powerful spell that you should be casting on yourself. Uh, it's called Union. Have you perhaps formed up into a union? No? You should think about it. Better workers' <laughs> rights, etc. <cetera. laughs> no? Uh, sorry, give me give me a second here. You can keep, you can keep vamping. vamping. Yes! <laughs> I want to get this door open so we can get Galen up here. We got to deal with you something. Should have, you should start is... making scrolls of dimension door so we can get out of like this. <laughs> I could get see if we can get the door open. I can cast levitate and get you up here. Oh, there's lots of ways to get out if you can see me. That's not the problem. <laughs> I mean, we, we're at a loss. We can't do anything. We are not the ones who are called Galen door opener. That is you. You're the only one who can open this door. We're just stuck here. We wouldn't yeah, be able to get out of this corridor if the door ahead of us hadn't opened. Fly. Please do it, Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't okay. we... St well, Stoltenheim and I stand back here with a rope. Go ahead and uh, we'll just start uh, with Bill. Go ahead and roll a d6 for initiative. Uh, so <laughs> okay. it hears your words or seems to hear your words, although you don't see ears on it. Uh, but it just continues to kind of lumber forward. I rolled a six. Okay, is anyone casting? Except for Galen, who does have no idea what's going on. <laughs> okay, you guys go first. What do you want to do? So far, it's just doing nothing but kind of lumbering towards you. And so on the map, uh, these are, let's see, 10 foot square. So it's about 20 feet away from you. It's just like right outside of that door. It's right outside the door? Yeah. Can I shut the door? Uh, it's outside <laughs> of the door. So. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. So it's in the hallway. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do with that rope? Well, if you and I hold it, we tie one end to Scrimble Shanks, and he just jumps on the floor until it gives way. We hold the rope. So he, so Scrimble Shanks doesn't fall, and then we can get Jameis up. <laughs> what if it cuts the rope when it shuts again? It shut oh. really fast. That'll suck. But we will be minus a Scrimble Shanks. Scrimble Shanks, put this rope on. <laughs> oh, there's this thing advancing on us. Oh. Yeah, yes, I'm aware. I'm aware. I see it. I'm going to, um, it moves slow, right? It moves very slowly. I'm going to back up at least like 20 more feet. Cause you said it's 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. Can we, how, how big is each square? 10 foot squares. All right. So you have your back right against what used to be the door. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. That's what you're doing. Anyone else doing anything? I kind of, uh, I mean, kind of like maybe I... we should see if the golem will fall through the floor. I take a defensive position just in case, while exposing the virtues of the union. <laughs> How all rise up? We've got nothing to lose but your clay, magical chains. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever's binding you. Am, am I able to see any kind of, like, if I look around, like, the steel part of the floor, like, do I see any kind of, like, button or depression? Or, Not so or, far. Like, you had only cleared off some of the rock. You were still working on this when this happened. Yeah, but that would kill all of us, though. Except for me and you. <laughs> We'd be fine. Problem solved. <laughs> um, I don't know. You guys want to hold on to my legs and I'll pound on the door and see if I can get it to open? Got a no, little bit of the thing is on. advancing on us. 
Well, yeah, but if we open the door, it'll fall in the pit, right? <laughs> With Galen. Perfect. We get Galen out, <laughs> and it falls in the pit. Problem solved. Then we just let the door close. We're good. It's a solid plan. All right. So you're going to try and open the door how? Let it walk onto it. Um. Okay. Well, I I, I asked Stoltenheim and Scrimble Shanks to hold on to my legs, and I'm gonna sort. I of... have drawn my weapon and am in a defensive position while talking so about the benefits won't of the be holding my legs. So, so I am probably... not gonna hold it. I will stand on top of your leg. <laughs> certainly. Okay. But I, until I know what this thing advancing down the corridor is going to be doing. I tell it to stop. Okay. All right. So, uh, sounds good. So, on its action, then, uh, it stops. And then it kind of rears back with its left arm. It kind of, in a slow motion punch, uh, get, remember how far you are away from it. But the arm just seems to extend out like stretchy putty. And it comes in. <laughs> Right at Radnar. <laughs> it's Reed Richards. Uh, what's your AC? My AC is now five. It's five. Okay, so that's going to hit you. Um, I so I it was lower the fist, the fist, come. It's still like slow. It's like slow motion. It's extending out. It comes under just under your skin. And they're like little, the fingers kind of like do this to the bottom of your skin, just kind of tickle the bottom of your skin. But then the hand kind of envelops your face and continues to kind of mold over your head. Um, and then the burning starts. <laughs> Ouch. Almost lovingly, it cradles your face. It's, it's very gentle at first, but then as it starts to surround your face, and then, and yes, and then the screaming starts as uh, the, the area between its palm and your face fills with acid. Take nine points of damage <laughs> as it starts just melting your face off. You guys can see, like, uh, the smell of flesh burning and smoke coming out between the, its interlaced fingers. Now, the thing is still, like, 20 over 20 feet away but its arm is kind of stretched out and is attached to uh <laughs> radnar uh that's its action so we're on the next round uh dion roll a d6 for me <laughs> that sucked five okay you guys go first what do you want to do i <laughs> valiantly chop off its arm so that radnar can I don't know, breathe again sort of thing. And it's not smothering his face. Absolutely. Go ahead, make me an attack roll. Ha-ha! Take my longsword, which is definitely not a short sword that I have just renamed. Ah, why are you not... Oh, there we go. That's why. I hit an AC of one for five points. You do. Uh, as the arm, it, you just, you know, your weapon hits it, and it's kind of like rubber. Like you, you think you do some damage to it, but it kind of it kind of moves your with your weapon, and then the recoil is really strong as it kind of bounces <laughs> off of it. Uh, all right, so that's Grimble Shanks. Uh, What's everyone else up to? Uh, Galen, you can smell meat cooking. <laughs> I can smell what the golem is cooking. Yep. Actually, you can hear everything that was said. It just sounds muted, but you can hear everything that they've said. Guys, what are you doing up there, guys? <laughs> guys, I can reach the roof, though, right? So yes, can... you can. It's only six feet up. Uh, I think an know. elf in this game is like four feet tall, so you can put your hand on it and kind of touch it. I don't know. Elves are fairly short. Yeah. I'm going to try hitting them with my mace. Just okay. Think. Yeah. Uh, just roll me some damage. Uh, I'm going to push the button because I can't remember what the thing is. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Five points of damage. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's almost like down. a gong like sound that rings out from beneath your feet uh, as the, the steel kind of reverberates from the blow. Um, you're not sure if it did anything, but I mean, you struck it. Mm. Five points, you said, right? Six. Okay. Six. 
Okay. Uh, so that's Scrimble Shanks and that's uh, Galen. What's Radnar and Shadelheim doing? Uh, I'm going to run in with my main gauche and uh, try and stab the arm that's on Radnar. Okay. I'm just like, yeah! Just panic. And that's one more oh, damage. I'm... What do you hit armor class wise? Uh, I hit an AC twelve. It oh, says wow. that's horrible. Yeah, it's a miss. Yeah, I'm not a melee. <laughs> yeah, I'm even giving it a worse armor class since you're just attaching. You're just attacking the arm that isn't trying to move out of the way. <laughs> you still miss it. Actually, what happens is like your your blade just kind of bounces off its rubbery kind of hide. Uh, mm. Bill, your face is enveloped. Your acid is burning your face off. Yeah, what I'm gonna you? be shocked, or else I would have cast a spell this round. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't declare that. So I'm gonna take my plus one silver dagger and and try to hack the arm off. Okay, make an attack roll. Just because you can't see, its face is covering your. You know, its hand is covering your face. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. All right. Let's make it AC 10. No. Nope. Yeah, it, it's nope. the same thing. Like, you do feel like you hit something, but it's like really rubbery. It just kind of bounces. Right. Uh, because okay. it might actually impact things. We have all have a plus one to. Oh, that's not going to make matter for that. The wouldn't have, yeah. No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't help okay. that. I had forgotten about bless. So. Yeah. Yep. If you just change your magic bonus on your weapon thing to just let it one higher than what it normally is, then incorporate it. Uh, so is that everybody? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's turn. It just produces more acid on <laughs> on the face of uh, yeah Radnar. Uh, uh, four more points of damage as new digestive juices pour into the area between its hand and your face. Uh, and it will try to stretch out its other arm and it will try to attack. Three. Uh, that's Scrimble Shanks. Another yeah, arm yeah. reaches out slowly, heading towards Scrimble Shanks. So sure, sure. that's so an AC of minus 10. <laughs> oh! Oh, well, then that 20. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely getting me. Even a minus 10 won't help that. <laughs> All right, same thing. Uh, that hand almost gently makes contact with your face and then just kind of slowly covers you. It's not airtight, so you're not suffocating or anything. Uh, but then the digestive juices start. Five points of damage. Uh, more screams, mm -hmm. more smell of of cooking meat fills I the chamber. I tried desperately not to scream, seeing as okay. it's putting yes. digestive <laughs> juices into my face. Exactly. Uh, next round, uh, Dion, why don't you roll a d6 for your side? I'm casting. I'm okay. also casting. All right. Six. A one. You guys go first. So, uh, Dion, what are you casting? I am going to cast Web. Okay. Um, I just I'm gonna stick it uh, from where the creature starts and behind. Okay. Yeah, I that's fine. Get... Uh, it really doesn't need to move anymore. So you web it up. <laughs> Not they a problem. Can't move, but they can break free depending on their strength. Yeah, but it doesn't need to move to continue to do damage to the two people it's connected to. <laughs> it is flammable now, though. It is. It, it is indeed. Bill, what spell were you trying to cast? I was going to see if I could dimension door away from it. You cannot, because you have to be able to see the destination, <sighs> I believe. Fuck, man, I no, actually, what... It's not really. Lightning bolt no. in its ass. Um, actually, hold either on a, a second. Known, either a known location or an unknown location with, you know, possibilities. Oh, yeah. So you could do it to a, a known location, someplace that you know fairly well. Where do you want a dimension door to? It's close. Not oh, I yeah. could go to the... No, I, well, shit. Go the entry if I way. go on the other side of the door, then that's yeah. not... How would I get back here? There's that. 
<laughs> we don't know okay. where anything is. I mean, you could dimension door to ten foot behind you. You could. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I mean, so can I? I. I want a dimension door. Will I still be in this hallway if I dimension? Like, can here's I how we'll do it because it has to be a place that you know well. So we're gonna make no. you roll an intelligence roll. If you pass it, you remember well enough what everything looks like. Okay. If you don't, I'm gonna randomize where you pop up. Sounds good. That hallway's not that big. Um, to have a no, lot of people really suddenly not. go popping around the place. That's really not so. Eek. Yeah. And, okay. All right. Where do you want to put yourself? Um, is back against the door far enough away that I'm not attached to the creature? Uh, the door that you came in from? Yes. You don't know how far it can stretch. Would it get you out of your immediate problem? Absolutely. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to go back there because I want to stay okay. in the area. Sure, you pop, uh, which causes it to, and uh, yeah, so you show up in front of uh, that door uh, next to the, the wall that's behind it. Your face is horribly burned, <laughs> uh, but you're hard. out. So Ooh. that was, go ahead. No, I've, I've, I've got a plan. I'll be like, hey. Fall down the pit. I'll fireball it. There's no pit. There's, no pit. there's a door there. Oh, yeah. there's no pit? Fuck. No, it's yeah, it's sealed it. instantly yeah. under him, over him. Yep. Well, that sucks. All right, so that's the two spellcasters. Uh, what does everyone else want to do? Galen, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll just roll for damage. Okay, go ahead. Uh, nine points of damage. Okay. You're definitely making some headway. Like, you can feel the steel bend a little bit when you strike it. It's just going to take time to... Yep. Uh, Scrimble Shanks, uh, what are you doing? Well, I will try and flail wildly at the thing on my face and chop it off. And sure. I, I mean, I assume it will stretch with me if I step backwards, or it's got a firm enough grip that I can't. So You can try both. You can move and attack. Yep, that, so. that is exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, first of all, have something chopped on your arm, you horrible creature from beyond. Where is my weapons? They're somewhere. <laughs> I've lost them all. No. <laughs> Some thief must have right. stolen them from you. AC2 hits. AC2, two two, but I do minimum damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so same thing. I mean, like, your your weapon does kind of get in there. You do. You feel like you did do something to it, but it's a lot spongier than you expected. I mean, you take a, a step or two back, it just stretches with you. Yeah. And it's got a firm enough grip, but it doesn't lay yep. go. Well, that's fine. That's all I got. All right, uh, so I think that's everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it's turn. It's turn. Uh, okay, so well, first of all, it just applies damage to Scrimbleshank. As it burns, two points, not bad. You say that. You have two points of digestive acid juice yep. on your face. See how you feel about that being not too yep. bad. So it has to retract the arm to be able to shoot it out again. So it, the arm that uh, left... Radnar kind of spools back, but now it is inside the webbing. Uh, so I'm going to say that it needs to make that roll to be able to break out. Uh, what is it? Is it its strength? Tells how long it takes to get out? No, uh, sort of. Yeah, let me just pull it up here real quick. For uh, web, it... Um... Depends on strength. Normal human range can break free in 2d4. If it's got over 18, it can break free in four rounds. Giant strength, creature breaks free in two rounds. So okay. It on strength. Yep. Uh, so it's uh, it's action then after uh, retracting the one arm is to start to pull at the webbing, and you see that it does just kind of grab some of it and rip it off. All right. Okay. That's the end of the round. So Jameis, why don't you roll me a d6? Is anybody casting this round? Yeah. Yep. Five. Ooh, you guys go first. Uh, casters, Dion, what are you casting? Radnar's Dyspeptic Bowels. Okay. okay. Uh, bowels. You cast it. It doesn't have bowels. All right. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, Bill. It explodes acid from everywhere. You'll get shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a <the> shot. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Sure. Go ahead. All right. Let me see here. I've got it saved in the things. No, I don't. 
No, there's no save for magic missile. You just no, you just roll the damage and tell me how many missiles you have split up. I mean, there's only one target, so it's all going into the same yeah. thing. So I have <laughs> I have three missiles. Okay. So it's three d six plus three. Oh, three sixes. Ah, yeah, yeah it's d six in this, but nine points. Okay, uh, that's actually enough. Uh, you're streaks of uh, burning skulls, I think is what your magic yep. missiles look like, uh, ran into this construct and uh, it bursts into flame, uh, which causes the web around it to also catch fire. So there's more flame and smoke. And then uh, once it has stopped, it's basically just cinders on the ground, bits of dirt, uh, and a couple of gems that were making up its eyes. Uh, Scrimble Shank is fine now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the ah. fire did not come all the way up the arm. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Okay, so you are left with a smoking door frame ahead of you where the creature came out of. Uh, unfortunately, Galen is still trapped below. Uh, actually, we can just we can just fast forward a little bit as you yeah. you manage to break the seam so that you guys can now see that there's a seam in the floor of the metal. And you can see it breaks enough. Yes, the creature. Yeah, <laughs> it breaks just that enough means... that you see Galen, the head of Galen's mace, come out for a moment. Mm. Yeah, but there's it now something that. you guys can grab onto and help. Yeah. Okay, I'm, sit I'm sitting down over here repairing my face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you take five, you, your hit point dice back. Yep. We've got the rings of regeneration. The ring, so it just takes some time. Nothing mind. nothing will stop me from talking. <laughs> <laughs> Even a burned off tongue and lips, they grow back. They grow tongue back. first. Yep. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, okay, so there you go. What now? Um, well, well, we're going to get Galen out of there. Yeah, well, we assume we got me out. Yeah, oh, okay. it's just it's just a small six foot drop down. It wasn't very deep. I kept asking about passwords. You guys know any passwords? I tried the one other one, but it didn't work. Did you try saying the name of the guy? Yeah. Both guys, the uncle, father, and the nephew, or yeah, nephew, nephew son. son. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't tell you his name. Uh, oh well. All right. Well, um, we had a clay golem. It burned oh. my face off. Look. Yes. He still, he, he still has yeah. no eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well. Do you want to add these? Well, oh, here's some gems. Here's what are, yeah, what are the I assumed what somebody else was going to be looking at, but obviously oh, not. Okay, then because you guys are too busy coming. Yep. Ooh, my face got melted. Ooh, horrible, horrible, horrible. <laughs> ah, uh, they're melted. just ah. two bits of worthless quartz. Hmm. I'm going to put that in quartz. Worthless. Worthless quartz. It's, that's its special magical ability. You can cover it in gold, and it will always be worthless. That's that's its magical ability. <laughs> oh, nice. right. Yeah, we need to worry how much XP we got from banking the gold we had previously and stuff. I mean, we got the the gold from that. We didn't. I thought it was gold from selling magical items or something. I don't know. But we're saying about gold last time that we could bank it and make it safer, would it? I yeah, I didn't get yeah. gold piece experience value because I didn't know what you're holding on to. Um, you were <laughs> out that episode, Richard, and I think yeah, I know. Were, and I yeah. thought we all got. Yeah, if you had divvied it out, then that's fine. I just didn't. And I'm remember. pretty sure I posted in the thing at the time when we got the XP that hey, this is how much we got from gold as well. Okay. Yep. yep, yep, you did. Yeah. Okay. And that, yeah. what, what we so didn't get gold for is the magical items and selling of there. Yeah, because nobody. So that we didn't have anywhere to sell them until we got to that town. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So I will. Uh, well, we didn't sell yeah, anything. We, we, didn't have a, we, didn't, we were looking on the sheet to realize we could sell stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there you go. You've got a corridor stretches uh, east to west, and then you've got the room that the creature came out of. Which now that your light is able to play through it, it's just like a junk room. It's like literally like broken furniture. There's like a table that's got a a broken leg off of it. 
Well, I uh, want to go in there. There's and some look. moldy carpets. <laughs> at the very, at the very worst thing that happens is that I am going in there and pissing all over this thing's home. It is mine now. I claim it. <laughs> Turn my face off, will you? Yep. Yeah, it looks like a junk room, like just yeah. a place that someone threw crap that they weren't going to use or intended to get rid of. Ah, uh, I rub up my face even more then, thinking that maybe it wasn't a clay golem. Maybe it was just crap golem instead. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could make one out of pod leaf pieces. I mean, I've heard of bone golems. Hmm. I'd rather not think about this anymore. Mm-hmm. But I continue to talk about it. <laughs> Is like the... Would I know if like burning acid is a property of regular clay golems? You would have no idea. Like, well, no, you have an idea. I mean, golems can be engineered to do all kinds of things. It's certainly not past what they could do. Right, it's within the realm of possibilities. Yep. Okay, it sure is. All right, so what do you want to do? After Scrimble Shake comes back, zipping up his pants, putting his belt back on, <laughs> claiming the room in the name of Scrimble Shanks. What in this? Is that just a Dane or is there something there? Nope, there is. Uh, it's a quarter if you want to look down it. It goes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you see oh, some dude, more doors, God. and then there's a set of stairs going down about midway through. This place is huge. Yeah. Do we want to look around up here before we go down? Well, there's lots of up here to do. Do you want to go left or right? Do you want to go up as we see it? Well, let's start in the left. Let's, let's clear those. Which yeah, left? that's those seems fine. Over um, here. I have a question before we go on quickly. Hmm. Does anybody remember what we were meant to be collecting from here? A uh, tiara, diamond tiara, and a um, sword with a gem. Sword with a gem in the hilt. All right. Okay. Palm good. Out. So you want to do this stall then, Redno? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. We're up in the stall. Okay. Who opens it? I will. I find traps by opening doors. That's what the fighter. That, that's what the meat shield does when there's no thief. <laughs> sure. Uh, you open door. Uh, this is an agreeable little lounge with armchairs, a flickering fire in a grate. The fire is lit. Rugs, mahogany furnishing, uh, not well maintained, alas. There's a liquor cabinet, a pair of spears mounted above the fireplace. Uh, there's a mantle there with some ornaments around it. Very cozy looking. I disbelieve the illusion because there's no one down here to maintain the grate of the fire. Is there any liquor in the liquor cabinet? Uh, there appears to be. I don't trust this. Yeah, I, I think the first off this time. Yeah, I don't either. Where are we? Are we in four? Oh, here, let me. No, let me really uh, no four urine. is the junk room. Okay. The the urine smelling junk room. There we go. Mm. All right, six. Um, uh, anyone got a ten foot pole handy? I uh, do. I I think I do. Do I? Well, should we also maybe grab something from the junk room that hasn't got too much piss on it that we can poke? I don't trust the room. I'm but I'm not trusting this room. So what are you no poking? That this nice this nice little lounge should be down here right now. I did not. I, I don't have a ten foot pole. You can we find a pole, like an old curtain yeah. rod in that room. Yeah. Uh, so you have one. What do you want to poke with it? The first thing, the floor, and the <laughs> before I go in there, I'm going to poke the floor. Yeah. It, Seems normal. It... Okay. You know, go in. <laughs> and just sort of pick a couple of things, but otherwise if it seems normal, that's fine. But I'm sort of I was sort of expecting to walk into something immediately. Just... Yeah, I mean everything looks like it seems like you poke some of the bottles of liquor that are on the liquor cabinet and they fall over. Uh if you poke at the fireplace, the end of the curtain rod burns. Hmm. Also poke the ceiling because I know you but I don't trust you. <laughs> uh ceiling is completely normal as well. Yeah, odd. I'm still suspicious of this, but I don't know if that's a trap, I can't activate it. Anyone? Anyone else? Hmm. 
I mean, is there anything that's like sticking out here? Well, I mean, the liquor cabinet is there's five uh, crystal decanters uh, with stoppers in them. There are a couple of silver goblets lined up there. Um, There are on the mantelpiece, uh, there's some small pottery, uh, Mm. like of uh, dwarves holding fishing rods. Um, There's a crystal bird. Uh, There's a small, very small box uh, made of wood and mother of pearl inlay on it. Um, You said there's a crystal bird? Yes. All right, I'll take the crystal bird and put it in my bag. You pick it up, um, and it's very finely crafted, but you also, it's very fragile. Mm. It looks like it's made out of blown glass. I set it back down gently, and I think maybe we'll come back so I don't get hit by anything and break it. I want to look at that box, though. As you're checking out the things on the mantelpiece, which puts you very close to the fire, it it feels like a fire. Uh, It's warm. The, there's heat coming from the fire. Yeah. Uh, you pick up the box. It's a very well-made uh, sandalwood box. It's got some mother of pearl inlay on it. There's nothing in it. It's just a very well-crafted box. There's nothing in it, you said? Nothing in it. This mm. box is evil. It's the key to everything. You're right. Um, I'll pocket <laughs> it. Okay. It's small. You slide it in your pocket. Fancy box. Yeah, just write down it's worth 75 gold. 75 gold. Okay. All right. Well, finders keepers. He said we could have whatever we find. I think we should come back for this, though, and I point to the bird. Mm. Okay. Uh, mm. I don't know what to make of it. Yeah. It just looks like a cozy little room that someone would come to enjoy some liquor as they lounge on the furniture. The only thing out of place is that the furniture is weathered, hasn't really been maintained or cleaned, it's dusty. Okay. How many many chairs, etc., are in here? Uh, there's, There's like one large lounge chair and then a few smaller wooden chairs. All right, okay. Is there a rug on the floor? There's not. Good. If nobody wants to drink the mysterious liquors in the bottles, then... Well, red no, I would, you know, yeah. Red yeah, I do, yeah. but I'm I'm distrustful. Yep. So in the cabinet, there are six silver goblets uh, and uh, five crystal decanters. And there is a brown and clear fluids in each of the decanters. Can I sniff them? Okay, uh, you grab one of the decanters, you like pop the... It. Yeah, it smells like alcohol. It smells like very rich, very... Like one of them is brown, that smells a little peaty, smells a little like, you know, a little fruity. It's definitely I'll, alcohol. I'll take a sip of the fruity one. Get right out of the decanter? Um, no, I gra- I'm not a savage. I grab a goblet. Okay. And I make sure it's like, is it clean? Is it dusty? It's perfect. It looks clean. There's a little bit of dust on it. You wipe it off. Yeah. I pour a little in real quick, like a a little like sample size. And I sift it a bit, smell it again. Okay. So as you do that, uh, the goblet gets cold to the touch and you find the liquid inside cools. Ooh. And uh, you roll the fine liquor around in your mouth. It's really pleasant. I start, I start putting the, do we have a bag of holding? <laughs> no. No, okay. not. You, you have Winky. Um, oh, Winky's I, upstairs. We never yeah, he's him. in the kitchen. He didn't bring him down. He's yeah. still eating. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I hold up the decanter a bit and I'm like, it's good. The goblets cool the liquid immediately. It's like magic. This could be very profitable. If we could learn the spell on this, we could cast this on all the goblets at the tavern, and that'd be a tourist attraction. (laughs) Do you want to write an X on the door so we remember to come back and claim it later? I just take the goblet that I drank out of and put it in my bag. Mm -hmm. We just need one to learn the spell from, I'm assuming. You're noticing that uh, three of the goblets look the same, and three of the goblets look... uh... So, like, there are three similar, and then there are another three that are similar, but different from the other three. 
I'm going to grab one of the other ones. Okay. And I'm going to curiously, I'm like, I wonder if this will warm it. And I exactly put a little what it in does. and exactly uh, what I it put does. the warm one in too, <laughs> pour it out. And then I put the goblet in my bag. So I have a warm yep. and cold. So goblet. neither of them like make the liquid boiling. It just gives it, you know, a nice little warmth. The other one just gives it a nice little chill, you know, n- nothing extreme. Yep. So hot, cold goblets. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's three of each. Uh, they're also of made of pure silver. Uh, they are worth 25 gold apiece, just in the silver value. 25 silver each. Or excuse me, 25 gold each, just in their silver and craftsmanship value. Okay. Ooh. I wish we were hitting for gold right now, that this would matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, you rob a few goblets. Uh, <laughs> How many did you All get right. to? All right, I wrote those in. All right, so there you got go. one of each. All right, what now? Next door. Yeah, <laughs> you're just gonna go down the row. All right, uh, are you opening the door again yourself, Galen? Yep, might as well. Uh, make me an intelligence check. No. Uh... <coughs> oh, damn, I made it. 10 out of 12. Okay, as you approach the door and you're ready to open it, you smell cooked fowl. You smell just rich. The smells of, like, cooking gravy and cooking fat. It, it just, you know, your mouth waters mm. a little bit. It, sounds, it smells like a, a fine meal is behind this door. Okay, uh, I'm gonna t- let's do like a shimmer like door handle of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna touch it gently in case it's actually hot because of fire or something, and then I'll it's open. not. Uh, so this is clearly a dining room. Uh, there's a large table with six chairs around it, six place settings of silver and china. There's a painting of an imposing old wizard hanging on the west wall. A uh, side table with glasses, bowls, a vase of long dead flowers rest under the painting. There's a splendid crystal chandelier from the ceiling that glows a soft light. Uh, actually, you would, it's its continual light. I mean, you know exactly what it is. It's a chandelier that's been spelled with continual light. That's one thing we know is continual light. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, go in. Okay. So the chandelier glows a little brighter as, uh, as you walk in. And uh, you notice that each of the place, well, you step in, and one of the place settings starts to food just appears on it. Hmm. Does the goblets fill with liquid or something? They do. Yep. Okay. I'm going to pick up the goblet, turn to the painting, and say, Cheers to you for walking. Thanks. So. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I follow it's, Sue. I see him do that, and I do the same. You step into the room. A few moments later, another plate fills, another goblet fills. It's uh, it's wine. Uh, it's a little dry, uh, a little sweet. So the painting is of a man that's maybe six feet tall, graying brown hair, brown eyes. Uh, looks very different than his supposed son upstairs. There's there's no family look alike at all. Yeah, well, we're assuming this is Gavorkian, too. <laughs> I'm wildly assuming that. But wizards generally, generally, I look at random wizards have pictures of themselves on their towers, right? He's mute. What did you say? You said pictures of himself? Wizards have pictures of themselves on their towers, I assume. Uh, they're wizards. I... I never got a tower, but I did have a painting once, but that was because I was rich. So, so Shuttleheim and uh, Galen are in the room. Does anyone else come into the room? We're going to die. <laughs> I mean, I am at the back, so I am waiting for Ragnar oh. to go somewhere. You're muted still. You're muted. Bill? Ragnar is muted. He's frozen. Oh no, he's not. Uh, he's he's not. Angry. I mean, still. he is. But... No, sorry, I was talking. I, I, I go in. Okay, All right, I follow them in afterwards. So. All right. Well, after each one enter, um, there's less than six of you, so each of the plates fill with food and, and drink. Uh, the chandelier 
increases in intensity of the light as each person comes in. So by the time the scrimble Saints comes in last, um, it's glaringly bright, like uncomfortably bright. Uh, so as scrimble Shanks come in and his food, uh, shows up on his plate, uh, everybody make me a save versus spell. There we go. Oh, failure. Woo. We have no bit, so don't ask if I'm staying. Matched. <laughs> Perfect. Where's Crit. Save versus spell. Was spell. It? Yeah. Right. It's the last one. Yeah. Yep, they are out of bits, folks. Much successes. Ah. And we will just couple of, cover up Scrimble Shanks with the little uh, thing to show you what bits do for everyone. Fun oh, stuff nope. right there. I'm trapped. I feel <laughs> bad. Okay, let me just go down the list. Uh, wait, who passed? Let's just do it. There's two people who passed Scrimble Shanks. Scrimble Shanks and Schottenheim. The two Schottenheim. S's. Okay. Everyone else is blinded by the light that's coming out of that sh the chandelier. It's not hot, but it's just the, it's, the light's refracting. There's colors coming off of it. And so you're blinded for the next four rounds. Everyone else, though, uh, the door is at the top of the room to the north opens silently. So those of you blinded don't really notice. Uh, and out of that room uh, come the it, you can see this. There's a kitchen in there. And the servants come out. Uh, only the servants have been dead for a really long time. That's no excuse. To not Are they go skeletons or zombies? They're zombies. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. oh, no. All right. So uh, only two of you uh, can see. <laughs> Everyone else is blinded for four rounds. So uh, let's oh, go ahead and have. Four rounds or four rounds? Four rounds. So four. Not D4. Four rounds. So, okay. Dion, roll a d6 for your side. All right, please go first. <laughs> Two, uh... Three, they go first. Uh, I'm casting. Okay, uh, you can see, so you can cast. That's just mm -hmm. fine. So they kind of spread into the room, and it's going to be... they're gonna, the, the people that went in first are going to be the closest people to that area, I would I would think. So one's going to go for Galen, one's going for Shadelheim, and one's going to go for Rad, uh, Radnar. So first of all, Shadelheim, uh, mm -hmm. because if they do damage to you, it's going to interrupt your spell casting. Do I lose uh, the spell if that happens? You just can't cast. Okay. I'll, I'll look that up in just a second here. There's nice. Ooh, that's gonna hit. Yeah, so nice yeah. that he rolled a nineteen. Yeah, that's how nice he is. Yep. Uh, yeah, the thing walks over and just takes a bite out of your Oof. shoulder for five points of damage. I scream like a little girl. <laughs> just, ah! What's happening? Yeah, exactly. Zombies. Let me uh, let me check something real quick. Um, I'm not doing it this round deliberately, but there is going to be a question that comes up. There's an obvious question for me. Can you turn things you can't see? Can I turn things I can't see? You can. As a matter of fact, you just have to present your holy item yeah. and say words. Yeah, I'm not doing it this round because I didn't know that they were there. So. But next round, ah, but not this round. This round, they can attack me, but the, I don't have a dex bonus, so I've still got a pretty good armor class. <laughs> I don't think in BX that uh, you being damaged actually keeps you from spell casting. Only being silenced and gagged or bound keeps you from casting, mm. as far as I can tell. Let me just check one more thing here, real quick. Spells. Spell casting. Oh. Disrupting spells. Here we go. Uh, disrupting spells. Uh, if a spellcaster loses initiative and is successfully attacked or fails to save throw before their turn, the spell being cast is disrupted and fails. Okay, it is. And it is removed from your memory as well. Yeah, so you just lose it. <laughs> yep. All right, so Shuttleheim's bit. Uh, Galen, what is your armor class without dex? Minus three. The same as it is with dex. Because you have no dex bonus, right? I have no dex bonus. Well, a 20 is going to hit regardless. <laughs> yeah, it's going to hit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, one of them just uh, tries to bite That's your face lot. off. <laughs> does really good job with it too. Yep. And the last it's one goes cool after one go. Radnar, and it misses horribly. 
So three zombies have entered the room. You see that there's still some more in the back kitchen. Uh, they no, seem don't. to be preparing food. <laughs> okay, your turn. So the two that can see, what do you guys want well, to do Shunheim's first? Shunheim's spell was disrupted. Right. Do they do an action? Correct. Um, it doesn't say it takes away your action. It just takes away your spell. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say you can cast. you can you can't cast, but you can take an action. Um, <clears throat> can I s- stab him with the mingosh? Yeah, uh, the one that just took a bite out of your shoulder sounds like a good thing to do. A really yeah. reasonable, measured approach to someone biting you in the shoulder. And we still have bless, so mm-hmm. I hit an AC eight. Wait, what is that? Or is that an AC zero? Yeah, I hit an AC zero. And how many points? Five total. Five. You... With a magical dagger. You slice off uh, its motivating bit. Uh, its head <laughs> perhaps its leg, and it falls to the ground, twitching. Uh, you have disrupted the one that's on you. Uh, Can I move? Who... Yes. I want to run away from all of them to the furthest so corner. So you backpedal <laughs> away from the kitchen door. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, who else could see? I can see. You can see. What are you doing, Scrimble Shanks? Um, given that they are undead, I will protect the cleric. Seeing as I think they will be doing useful things next sure. time. Sure. You step Screw next the, the wizard. So I will go over and attack the one that is attacking the. Go right ahead. I think. Uh, they're only Thank AC you. eight. Take my. Yeah, I didn't want to protect the wizard. I attacked the cleric. Eight, eight points of damage. Okay, and you hit AC, AC two, so Yeah. You hit. Eight points of damage. You do the same thing. I mean, you you essentially just <laughs> decapitate it. Uh, probably can't reach to decapitate it. So you probably cut it off at the knees. Then yeah, uh, so it just falls one down. Dice creatures. <laughs> okay. I get the feeling uh, that as soon as I cast any kind of clerical turn undo, they're just going to evaporate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Galen. I get the food. Yeah, Galen. Uh, it's up. It's you. You're blinded still, though. What do you want to do? You want to oh, turn undead? Not much. I, I just sort of flail around at the moment because I can't see. Okay, anything. so you don't want to that try to turn. Okay. Well, see, I'll, Ow! I'll, I'll, Stop that! You got me! I'm not doing it this round because I didn't know there were zombies. I'm right. No, I don't think anybody dead. actually yelled out zombie or undead or anything. Yeah. So that's fair. I did. First round. Oh, you did. I was okay. yeah, he did. But that was that round, so I'm yeah. going to say it's it. Bill, not, what are you doing? Um... Well, I mean, I'm going to know that there's something coming in yes. and attacking us. Um, I basically just want to hop up, grab the chair, and kind of... Okay, just... you grab a chair, and you, uh, you start flailing about you with it. Uh, I'll I'll give you a bonus to your AC if something attacks you next round. Okay. Uh, so there's only one thing left, and let's go ahead and roll initiative. Jameis, D6. Okay, I am casting, so just do I go first or not? It's going to be yeah. a big question. Two... Five. They go first. So it was the one on Bill that's still alive. So we will go ahead and roll it. Bill, I'll uh, drop your AC by two. So what does that make your AC? AC three then. Uh, So it misses. But you do feel something like uh, at the end of your chair is trying to reach for you. Right. Okay. The ones, those of you that can see, see back into the kitchen. There are three more zombies back there, but they seem to be hard at work cooking. Yeah, they're not interested in you that doesn't stop me I'm yeah so you're casting galen are you gonna turn undead do i even need to roll uh what is the lowest thing you can get if they're hit by uh, two creatures there's four of them left total i am auto destroying anything four and below as long as i can roll that many hit dice so i just i first thing i just need to roll to see how many hit dice i hit yes Ten hit dice of creatures. That's enough. <laughs> There's four of them left, two hit dice apiece, so that's enough. They all poof explode. Zombie ash in the food. Yeah. As Thottle Escobar Shanks pointed out. <laughs> yeah. Uh those either that are still blinded or still blinded for a couple of rounds, but then afterwards yep. you're fine. <laughs> Put me in the zombies. Put me in the zombies. <laughs> you're done, you're done. You're done. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's all quiet. Did. Oh, yeah, right. cool. Okay, I am interested in the food that is here mm-hmm. as well. Is it is it appropriate for each person, or is it just a generic meal? No, it's just a generic meal. Okay. It's not appropriate for a person. Eh, all right. 
Well, I mean, there's no reason not to try some of this. Uh, so you eat the food? <laughs> I ate some yeah. Of it, yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Unfortunately, with the with the cooking staff now dead, your plate doesn't refill. Oh, I wondered. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Well, I mean, I had a meal. Well, it yep. was great. Is it cutlery, or are we? I mean, yeah. Are we already... uh, there's full full set of silver cutlery. Oh. Spoons, knives. I shoved the cutlery in my bag. <laughs> Six silver okay, cutlery I sets. A little bit until my hip points are back. <laughs> yeah, um, same. Uh, we'll go you know, poke our heads into the kitchen, see if there's anything. There. Yeah, no, I just want to check out that painting. Once I can see, I want to check out the painting a bit more. Okay. Just to see if there's any sign of. Yeah, right. Uh, do wizards put paintings of themselves in their tower? Or... Randall's just completely ignoring me. I mean, yeah, I, I know. Uh, so, do you manipulate the painting? Like, do you move it around yeah, and such? Okay. Well. Uh, well, behind it is a, a small uh, setup. There's a there's a key ring behind the portrait. It's got twenty Ooh. some odd keys on it. So I find the way to access this. I'm the door guy. <laughs> That's gonna make things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're in the hallway now. Are there any keys on there which stand out? All. Actually, all the keys look exactly the same. Oh, well, mm. the number of like teeth they have is different, but otherwise mm. they all look the same. Is there any kind yeah. of marking or label on any of them? There's not. I will also have a look at number an eight because we know what's the there's the kitchen to see if there's anything of interest. Otherwise, move on. Well, there is something of interest actually. Oh, um, okay. So as you're looking in there, there's like a bread box, right? Uh, when you but when you open it. it, there's no bread in it, but there's like a shimmering in the air. Bread? No. So I mean, do I? What do I? What do I know about this? Am I any? any is have any a idea what box this is? Of holding? Is it a toaster? If I put something near it, does it get warm? No. Stick my hand in it. Oh. Uh, you stick your hand in it, and you feel a loaf of bread. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's it's a yeah, it's a food dispenser box. Yeah, yeah it's so, like one of those things, like you know, the decanter of endless water. Except this you, bread. <laughs> bread box of endless. You bread. open another box, uh, <laughs> and the box says eggs, and it's the same thing. It's just kind of wait. So basically, all this food is stored in an interdimensional space. Nice. Each box is its own interdimensional space that keeps the food from spoiling. Yeah, so there's impressive. one for bread. There's oh. one for eggs. Uh, there's one for water, uh, stuff like you know, this basically all the ingredients. There's a small box with an interdimensional, ladies space. and gentlemen. I think our uh, green company house is stocked. Yep, I I, like is, is there <laughs> is there like a bottle of endless oil or something? A bottle because of endless they, what oil because they'll need something to cook it with. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there's there's put your hand in and you come out with goose fat. <laughs> Ew. Let me pick that up. I mean, I'm yeah. just thinking about the applications of being able to spread endless oil all over the floor with our... Uh, no, because it doesn't come out all by itself, does it? You have to stick your hand in yeah. and then rub it all over the floor for the yeah. fireball to be... And so the other thing right that you right. notice is there, yeah. are, there are six trays that are exactly the size of the six trays in the other room. When you put something on it, it appears on the tray in the other room. Neat. Yeah, if we can just um, grab this entire place and move it to the green coming out. Do, do the trays move? Yes. Let's take the trays so that we can like move shit around on the battlefield like that. That'd be kick ass. Well, mm. you would have to. Uh, mm. No, because the trays. Are you, I put is a... there a corresponding tray at the other at the other yes. place? Yeah. I put oh, a okay. dagger on the tray. Uh, it moves to its corresponding tray in the other room. I go back and I get my dagger. I'm like, well, that works. <laughs> All right. I, I absolutely think we should take one of these with us because then, I mean, 
I can like if we are giving something to somebody and we decide that they're not trustworthy, then we can transport it back somewhere else. Yeah, if you see if we put it up at a house back in somewhere. <clears throat> Hold on a second. This is a teleporting spell. How come they're not delayed for a year? <clears throat> And have to go on adventures all the way through their things. Hey, you, you know, want to what spend we, what we time do, experimenting? What um, we could do with it is if we take one of the trays in here with us, and people come and mess with us, we just put them on the tray, and boom, they'll tra teleport here. <laughs> <laughs> and we just leave like a whole shitload of people in that room. We we put the tray in the fire. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. I want to mess around with the trays for All a right. while. And see so, what you'll figure out is the object must fit completely within the plate for it to transfer. Uh, and two, the distance is not much. All right. Yeah, it, it's a very short distance that it will work in. Oh, still. So, I, I, rolled, uh, I rolled for essentially an hour's worth of time of you screwing around in here. So the other thing you'll figure out is the small interdimensional spaces are small. Like uh, mm. the egg box, for instance, is like, you know, that big. And it, it, there's only a little bit of space inside of it. But the thing about it is nothing in it rots or decays. You so know, it's, not an, like it's not an endless supply of eggs or an endless supply of bread. It's just it was stocked. And then what's in there is what's in there. Yeah, we had a pillowcase just like that. Yeah. These are minor magics that uh, magic users learn while they are figuring out the larger teleport and spells and stuff like that. These are small. You know this stuff, <laughs> I mean, a little bit, but I not to <laughs> not to play to play you up to your ideas about me, but the teleporting plate thing would be very interesting in a gambling game. You know, oh, if only I had that card, reaches in pocket. Yep. To person who is outside and helping me. Hmm. There are possibilities. Yeah. Yep. That's interesting. It, it seems yeah, like but... the it, it seems like the distance is about twenty feet is as far <laughs> as it will move something from one area to another. Oh no. You know what we've got here? Text messaging. You can just write it on a piece of paper and then Yep. Yeah, but it only goes one way. Well, we can. You can have uh, a circle. I mean, there's three of us. We can have. Two, well, no, there's four of us, isn't there? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> can be hard. All right. So yes, you have uh, found the wizard's kitschy little kitchen where he has <laughs> small magic things that just make his life a little easier. Uh, and he apparently had raised zombies to be his cheap labor. <laughs> not a bad idea yep so yeah you you wasted about an hour there but luckily for you no wandering monsters well uh Redner will know from gate that galen does not like the undead around yeah. if you bring up zombies he will get rid of them yeah um did this still go up or down down uh okay. also there is a little bit more corridor yeah yeah we're not going way. down yet well, first things first i think this door here Continuing left. Oh. Okay, you're gonna check that room. All right. Uh, so you're same thing. You're going in first. Yep. All right. First of all, the door is locked. Uh, the door is different than the rest of the doors you've seen. It's glossy black wood, iron hinges. There's a plaque affixed to it uh, with an etched warning: "Do not enter. Guardian is hostile and very dangerous." K. Can we look through the keyhole? You want to look through the keyhole? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is a weapons room. You see racks of weapons. Hello? Anyone in there? Okay, nothing. I knock. Uh, go ahead and make me a luck check to say high or low. Hi. I have a bad yeah. feeling. Nope. No. Unlucky. Unlucky. Okay. Uh, Shadowheim, you say you knock. Yeah, I'll knock yeah, after I'll nothing knock. happens. Yeah, nothing, nothing really happens. Housekeeping. 
Does, 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 does the key ring look like this? The sort of key that goes in the lock here? Again, every single one of the keys look the same yeah. except for their tooth end. So, like, if you want to go through and try to see if you've got a key for it, you can do that. Yeah, no, because you can tell, like, if the key's this big and the lock's this big, you can really tell. All of the key other. locks that you've seen are the same size as these That's keys. The key and okay, they're all the same size. <laughs> yeah, unless anyone's going to stop me, I'll try it because we're down here to clear the place out as such. And we don't know where this damn sword is. Could be in the okay. weapons room. You eventually find the right key. Uh, you you got to go through each of the 20, you know, it's always the key last six. One that is key six. It unlocks a room. So what you're looking at, again, it's, uh, it's, it's an armory. Many weapons line the room on shelves and racks. Um, the thing that draws your attention is that there's a gargoyle port, uh, perched uh, kind of like on a, a lintel that's maybe six feet off the ground. You couldn't see it from the keyhole. Uh, it's just a stony, horrid-looking thing with horns and things. Uh, it looks like it's made of stone. Uh, and as you're looking at it and wondering, it turns its head and it looks at you. And we'll we'll go ahead and we'll end there for the night as we're at time. Of <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus, I have a bad feeling about that guy. Uh, I will also say though that one of the, uh, actually everybody roll me a d six. Two. Just miss. Three. Six. Okay, Shadowheim. Uh, you notice that one of the swords, a uh, two-handed sword that is in the rack, is got a gem set into the hilt and pommel. That's the sword. I see it. It's in there. Yep. Cool. There we go. So we'll end there for the night. Uh, Dion, what do you got going on this week? Well, when I'm not playing TTRPGs with all my super cool awesome friends like you guys, yes, even you, Richard, you can find me on my channel at Substance is Used on Twitch, where I play retro games, mostly JRPGs. I also am going to be doing some more GTA V roleplay on stream eventually. Uh, we just beat the Sailor Moon RPG. It was Ooh. a cute little short game. It was nice, and now I'm just thinking about what to play next. Sounds just nice. bigger, big set of it to the ground. <laughs> Famous! Anything new on the blog? Yes, they still have movies, so I again continue to still review them, including the latest one, Jurassic Park, no, Jurassic World, Dominion, Dominion <laughs> in which things happen, and they put it up on the movie screen. I'll have to check it out. I haven't seen that movie yet. Uh, Bill, got anything going on with the frogs? Yeah. Um, starting this Sunday, I'm going to be running part two of the Splinters of Faith campaign. Uh, still got a couple of spots left, so come on over to the Frog God Discord server, sign up for organized play, and sign up for my game. And I'm here on Tuesdays, Fridays, and sometimes Sundays. <laughs> there you go. Richard... Back to streaming. Pride Month, as you all know. So, uh, if somebody disrespects you, don't forget, fucker is a gender neutral term. <laughs> and if you want to see some other fucker, well, you can watch me playing video games badly here on Twitch at LMTDETMFFR, or say it with me now. Limited, Limited time, time offer. offer. No, no vowels. 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 Oh, we're so good at that. Uh, and if you found us, you know where we are. Twitch.tv slash Steam Steel Murder. We also do this Simul stream to YouTube as well. Uh, check out the podcast at Blue Magic, B-L-U-M-A-G-I-K, uh, where all the links you are seeing now can be found there very easily. Thanks for playing, guys. Thank you very much for any of those out there watching us. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. <clears throat>